Hey, I'm Cheryl from We're in the Rockies. My husband Matt is behind the camera. And today we are at Grand Teton National Park. And our goal is to help people travel to the West. And one question we get asked pretty frequently is what is there to eat in the park? And so today I'm going to go over some principles of the food in the park, just general guidelines to know about it. And this actually goes pretty good for any national park. Um, and we're also gonna go into Jackson a little bit. And then I'll talk about the restaurants that we've actually eaten at and our reviews on them. So to begin, there are a few lodges throughout Grand Teton National Park. And it's pretty common for each lodge to have a fine dining room, a grill, and a lounge. And then also like a little coffee shop. And so you can expect to have, you know, the coffee shops, the food is pretty inexpensive. You're looking at maybe three to six dollars to get like a coffee and a donut or for lunchtime they'll have like frozen pizza and burritos just something pretty simple the grills you can expect to pay I would say between 13 and 18 dollars for a burger and then at the lounges a lot of times the lounge and even the girls will take some of their menu from the the fine dining room and you'll pay the same price whether you're at the grill or at the fine dining room for the same food and a lot of times they'll share the kitchen so just something to know now as far as the fine dining rooms go the national parks they do like to kind of show off the local food or like the local game and so you'll find elk bison trout things like that to kind of make it a more special experience. The Grand Canyon, we've had prickly pear syrup here, huckleberries are king, and so you'll kind of get some local flair from that. Now, as far as the fine dining rooms are concerned, you're going to the fine dining rooms mostly for the view. Um, I haven't been to a fine dining room. We're right now at the mural room at the Jackson Lake Lodge, and we just had breakfast there, and it had a beautiful view of the Tetons, and the room was also pretty nice. The food was great, you know, linen tablecloth, linen napkins. Uh, breakfast at the mural room is always a buffet, but it was a pretty nice buffet. They had an omelet bar, some really great potatoes. Our family really enjoyed it. But you are pretty much here to enjoy those nice views. One other thing to know about the fine dining is that for the most part, breakfast and lunch are actually quite comparable to what you'll pay for a grill. Like I said, grill, you're gonna be looking at $13 and I'd say for lunch it actually can get up to like 22 or 25 but you'll pay similar prices actually at the fine dining you also need to know that at the fine dining especially for breakfast and lunch casual attire is just fine they recognize that you're in a national park you're hiking around so you don't need to worry about getting all dressed up but for fine dining it is recommended to get a reservation before and sometimes these reservations can fill up fast lunch is first come first serve breakfast is first come first serve but dinner is where they get real fancy <laughs> and you can count on your meal for dinner costing at least $30 at the mural room and up to 50 so that's kind of the price point you're looking at as far as the dress code I don't think they would kick you out if you were casual but I also think you might feel a little uncomfortable if you you know didn't clean up a little bit before your meal okay the other thing I want you to know about are general stores in the park there are gas stations and general stores and those sell sandwich and picnic supplies on the southern end of the end of the park is Dornan's which I like to call a mini mall in a good way they have all sorts of adventure stuff like fly fishing and photography and adventure rentals but they also have a couple little restaurants to eat at and they have a great store with sandwich supplies you can either order them you know, order sandwiches there and take them to go there's coolers you can buy there's you know chips anything you'd want for a picnic and you can even buy stuff to make your own sandwiches and and I really do like to eat picnics in Grand Teton so the general stores will have picnic supplies I've noticed that a lot of the general stores they do sell pre-made sandwiches kind of like what you would buy at a gas station they're about six dollars so just to kind of know that that's available you also will see some produce in these stores too so if you're looking for fruits and veggies you can have that the next things to know is that pretty much all the restaurants in the park have a plant-based option. Of course, we're in the national parks, they're thinking about sustainability. And so if, if meat's not your thing, don't worry, they're gonna have a plant-based option for you. And a lot of them are really good. The last thing I wanna talk about is staffing. The last three years, at least since Matt and I have really started paying attention to things like this, the national parks have really struggled with their concessionaire staffing. All the stores, all the restaurants have been understaffed. And so I've noticed that most of the restaurants have kind of interesting hours they'll open for three hours for breakfast and then two and a half hours for lunch and then maybe four hours for dinner but there are times during the day where the restaurants aren't open the grills i think are are open all the time but the fine dining ones they're definitely going to be having 
some breaks during the day and I think actually the girls will too. So just keep that in mind and just the other thing to know is that some of these restaurants that would normally have, <laughs> some of these restaurants have switched over to buffets because they don't have the staffing to make individual items. Now the waitress here at the mural room said that they always have a buffet for breakfast but when we were in Glacier last week they were telling us that they weren't always a buffet but due to staffing they were. So if that's an important thing to you just check out before you go and know what's happening with the staffing and then I also just recommend being real patient with the staff. A lot of these staff are from other countries and they're doing a a work to travel program where they get to come out here and work in the parks and then they get a month to travel. So they're here, they're so excited to be here to see the parks and they're just doing their best. Okay, now for our individual restaurant reviews. I'm gonna start up north in the Coulter Bay area. So we have eaten at Leek's Pizza before. This is a kind of a headliner. People are always talking about Leek's Pizza. Um, their pizza was good. What I remember about it, we ate there last year and I wasn't taking super great notes, is I mean, you're paying national park prices for a pizza. I bet you it was at least 20 to $25 for that pizza. But what I liked about Leek's Pizza was it had outdoor seating where we could look at the Tetons, which I loved. The next I wanna talk about going a little more Southern is Signal Mountain Lodge. Signal Mountain Lodge is famous for their nachos. Everyone loves their nachos and I I tell you this, a half order of nachos will feed at least three people. So you're gonna be paying about $15 for a half order of nachos, but just know that's gonna be feeding quite a few people and that's their signature thing. Next up is to grab something to eat at Dornan's. Dornan's is on the southern end of the park and Dornan's has some pretty fun stuff going on. You can eat in a covered wagon, you can eat at their pizza and pasta cafe. Matt and I got amazing bagels there yesterday in the general store they were super good but you know a meal there would cost between 15 and 30 dollars depending on if it's breakfast or dinner and they do kind of a chuck wagon style also and it's just it's a beautiful view of the mountains there's just a lot going on and it's a great spot to just restock on anything you need so Dornan's is a pretty good spot the next one I want to talk to is Teton Village Teton Village you can take the gondola up to the top and so that will cost you a little bit of money but up there there are two restaurants the off piste off pista oh my gosh I hope I am not slaughtering this but I know I am but they've got a fancier restaurant on the left and a less fancy restaurant on the right and the less fancy restaurant sells pizza and it's about four dollars a slice and it is an incredible view up there and they kind of have the seating outside segregated <laughs> so they've got like the expensive restaurant one on one side and then the less expensive one on the other side, but the view is exactly the same. And so that's a great spot, a great value spot to get an incredible view and just a simple food. Now, as far as dining in Jackson Hole or the Jackson area, you're gonna find some chain restaurants, not right in the middle of downtown, but on the outskirts. I saw a Dairy Queen, I saw a Wendy's, and so if you're, you know, we, we travel with our children and our, our son is dying to go to Wendy's, so. Maybe if you're like us, you might have a kiddo that needs to go to a Wendy's or maybe you like familiar food. So just know that there's a couple of those in the Jackson area. The places that we've tried, we've tried the Moose ice cream, which is about $4 a scoop and it's delicious. You'll have to plan on a line, but it is really, really good ice cream. And then yesterday we ate lunch at Sidewinders, which is a little bit on the outskirts of town. It's a sports bar that all the locals here have been telling us about. And they've been featured on like a food channel for their amazing soft pretzels, which did not disappoint. I tried mine and their marinara sauce was homemade and it looked like all the bread, the buns and everything was homemade. It was delicious. Our son was super excited. There was a Ravens game going on, but their, their food was super good. Nat got a Cuban, which is pretty good. Our friend got some cowboy macaroni and cheese with some pulled pork in it and what I really liked about eating there was it was a little bit of a reprieve from the kind of jacked up prices in the national parks on the food. Our entrees are between 13 and 18 dollars where around here you can count on it being quite a bit more. So that was a little bit of a nice a nice break being in that fun little sports bar with the and they have kind of airplane decor, a little bit of patio seating. So that was a great spot to eat. So we do have an article all about places to eat at Grand Teton National Park. And actually a lot of resources if you are visiting Grand Teton and Jackson Hole. We've got our website, we're in the Rockies.com that we cover camping, the best things to do, river rafting, food, all of that stuff. And then we also have a playlist all about planning your trip. And we even sell a guide if you wanna make things even easier for yourself. Until then, thank you for watching and have a great day.